What is the most common root of spread of a tumor whose histology and neuroimaging has been shown? Here in the neuroimaging what you are seeing is a contrast enhancing lesion which is cystic in nature in the brain as a space occupying lesion. So it could be it could be a tumor. Yes. Now, doctor, in the histology being shown, there are anaplastic cells of the glioma fundamentally, and uh, it is otherwise called glioblastoma multiforme. So, how does glioblastoma multiforme basically um, is uh, spread? It is through the uh, white matter tracts that the glioblastoma multiforme will be traveling. Now, the lesion is being shown to you in the figure. What is this lesion? It is classically a myelomeningocele. What are all the lesions with which it is associated? A myelomeningocele is associated with, please check whether the voice is clear. Huh? It is associated with cheery 2 malformation but not cheery 1 malformation is the point of interest here. So, what are the differences between cheery 1 and 2 you have to read. Uh, this session is too short to go into more a bigger detail of that. Then the bleed is being shown to you in the figure. Basically what is this bleed? There is a bleed into the sylvian fissure. There are three types of bleeding. Can you give me the board? As all of you know, three types of bleeding are very well known. <clears throat> you have the brain with its sulci and gyri, right? Then above that you are having what is called as a pyomata, which is immediately abutting the brain. Above that what you have is called the arachidoid. Above that what you have is called the dura. Above that you are having calvarium, the bone, skull bone. So this is calvarium, this is dura, this is arachidoid, this is paya. Paya is completely attached directly with the brain. Then between arachinoid and the paya, you are having a space which is called subarachinoid space. Between the dura and arachinoid, you have subdural space. And between calvarium and dura, you are having epidural space. Any artery, like middle meningeal artery, whenever it bleeds, it leads to a bleeding into this epidural, which is arterial bleeding. Any bleeding which occurs from veins, the flimsy veins, when the brain become shrunken in the old age, the veins will break down and that lead to a bleeding which is a long bleed into subdural space. And any rupture of the berry aneurysm will lead to the bleeding into what is called subarachinoid space. Whenever subarachinoid bleeding is there, the bleed will occupy typically the place of these uh, fissures. One of the major fissures that we have is sylvian fissure. And any sylvian fissure bleed means there is a subarachinoid hemorrhage is what you have to basically understand and appreciate. <coughs> now there is a differential diagnosis. Uh, for the subarachinoid uh, bleed, yeah, can you go to 2D mix and yeah, how to take this out? Yeah, so there can be 
a internal carotid artery aneurysm, middle cerebral artery aneurysm or a partial communicating artery aneurysm, anything can bleed into the sylvian fissure but not partial cerebral artery which is a part of the vertebro basilar circulation is what you have to basically understand. One of the most common benign spinal mass which cause cord compression in the location shown to you. So basically the, in the location shown to you it is an epidural location where uh, this is the uh, spinal cord doctor. This is the spinal cord. It got compressed over here and it is the intervertebral disc actually and this compression is occurring in the epidural area and any epidural mass causing spinal cord compression most common lesion is always the herniated disc is what you need to appreciate. Now what are you seeing here? This is corpus callosum. This is corpus callosum, this area. In the corpus callosum, you are having these opacities. Generally, corpus callosum gets blood supply from both anterocerebral arteries, from both the sides. Only one side anterocerebral artery occlusion will never lead to corpus callosal infarct. Generally, any opacity of this nature, whenever it occurs, in hyper intensity occur in the corpus callosum area, two possibilities are there. <coughs> One is there could be an infarct which is almost impossible because corpus callosum gets blood supply from both anterocerebral arteries. Second is demyelination. Demyelination is most likely the cause. <coughs> and Callosal, corpus callosal demyelination, what is the most common cause? Multiple sclerosis. So, it is an autoimmune mediated demyelinating disease, multiple sclerosis, true. And it has a female preponderance, true. It occurs in the callososeptal interface in the typical location. And what are these opacities in the callosum, corpus callosal area called as Dawson's figures? Dawson's Dawson, Dawson, D A W S O N. Dawson's fingers is the name which is being given for the corpus callosal opacities. Multiple sclerosis is not the most common demyelinating disease, doctor. Most common demyelinating disease is often vascular in origin and uh, it is the age related demyelination is most common cause but not multiple. Sclerosis is what you have to basically appreciate. Now you are having a MRI. Uh, what is a very prominent feature in this MRI of the brain? If you look at cerebellum, can you appreciate cerebellum leaves, folia became very prominent. Cerebellar structure is basically a foliar structure. Unless cerebellum degenerates, the folia will never be prominent. The cerebellar folia being very prominent means the patient is having cerebellar degeneration. And uh, what are all the conditions leading to <coughs> developmental disorders where cerebellar degeneration is a feature. Down syndrome, fragile X syndrome, infantile autism, in all this cerebellar degeneration is a feature but not in stooge Weber syndrome is a point of interest here. Now you have been shown on the radiograph a simple finding. What is the simple finding? On the right side hemidiaphragm is elevated. On the left side it is normal. Can the online students can punch whether the online exam system or the images are clear uh, for the online students? Can you please punch whether the radiographs, MRI images, everything are uh, well visible? Are they clear? Yes, very good. So, what is the cause of a hemi diaphragmatic 
elevation is a very important uh, point you need to appreciate. Generally, hepatomegaly is the most common cause for the isolated hemidiaphragmatic elevation on the right side is what you need to appreciate. Now, you have been shown the radiograph. In this, what is a very, very prominent feature? The prominent feature is, I will show you another radiograph. Ah. You have the trachea, bifurcation of the trachea. This bifurcation of trachea got elevated, I mean more, increased. Angle of bifurcation of trachea is increased. Which chamber of the heart enlargement will lead to increased angle of bifurcation of the trachea. Left atrial enlargement as in the case of the mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation will lead to increased angle of bifurcation of the trachea. This gas shadow is there no doctor. Easy to follow the trachea. This gas shadow is the trachea. So, there is an increased bifurcation of the trachea. How is the cardiac shadow? Cardiac shadow is not increased. If the cardiac shadow would have increased, you would have thought of left ventricular dilatation. But here, there is a left atrial enlargement is what I want to underscore to all of you. Then, you have been shown the radiographs where you are seeing what are called curly B lines, which are the sign of pulmonary venous congestion and an increased pulmonary capillary pressure. So, at what pressure will rise of the pressure of the pulmonary capillaries will you see curly B lines is a question. At 25 mill millimeters of mercury, you will find an increase in, uh, you will find the appearance of the curly B lines. So, uh, curly A, curly B, curly C, all the three are indications of the increased pulmonary capillary pressure. Uh, depending on the location you call, curly A, B and C. Eh? Then, what is the radiographic sign which is being shown to you is indicative of? This is basically called a golden S sign. It is called as golden S sign. So, whenever there is a right upper lobe collapse, Typically, the collapsed right upper lobe will show a convex bulge along the lower aspect of the collapsed lung. You can see the collapsed, this is the collapsed right upper lobe. The collapsed right upper lobe will present a convex lower border and that is called golden S sign. Why is it so important? Whenever there is an apical pancoast tumor, a bronchogenic carcinoma. It will cause the collapse of the right upper lobe bronchus and that lead to development of the right upper lobe collapse. And the collapsed lung will present a lower convex border, which is called golden S sign is what you need to basically remember. Radiology is a cool job. Everybody want to take MD radiology. No patients, I mean no patients directly coughing on your face, sneezing on your face. You sit in a air conditioned armchair and decide, oh this could be bronchogenic carcinoma, this could be exodural compression, this could be a complete uh, Cerebral atrophy, etc., etc. So, do you want to enjoy that? Uh, uh, nowadays, one of our, uh, the other day I met in Bangalore airport, uh, one of my very old, when I was doing MD general medicine, he was MD radiology. That guy I met, uh, I said, What are you doing nowadays? He said, uh, Don't you know I am doing tele radiology? Morning around 4 Portugal. Uh, patients I have uh, sent the report, another three from uh, uh, Chicago. So, across world he is reporting, 
patients pneumonias algemeas etc etc huh? so things have changed a lot and they will be much more rapidly changing as you go ahead now patient is having a neurocutaneous syndrome all the four neurocutaneous syndromes doctor 100 percent you should be sure neurofibromas <coughs> tuberous sclerosis stooge webus etc etc then you are also being presented with subependymal glioma subependymal glioma in this neurocutaneous syndrome it is tuberous sclerosis is what you have to basically um, remember glioma is the other name of astrocytoma basically so don't miss we have a 1400 hour video content on the online video library at anatomytomedicine.com any topic you feel I want a revision in 30 minutes 20 minutes you have the you you name the topic you have the class on that available in the online video library a MD entrance orientation class oriented review class so live classes are going to become obsolete for a period of time because on one button you have a 20 points on astrocytoma 10 points on medulloblastoma are available as an online video library at anatomytomedicine.com so uh, if you already joined for the mock test series you all have um, a heavily discounted price you will get uh, a one year access to the anatomy to medicine.com any topic you want you can revise if you are bored with only one teacher you have two three teachers talking on the same topic you have ovarian tumor discussed by dr murli dr shilpa dr deepthi so many people available in the video library so it becomes very easy hoffman regler sign which is being shown in the figure to you see what you can see is this is the ventricle this is the heart what is anterior ventricle among the two ventricles right and left ventricle right ventricle what is posterior left ventricle so suppose the left ventricular shadow and the inferior vena cava shadow between the two if there is a space created you can see the arrow actually it is not very clear in this LCD projection it is actually very clear in the online between the two shadows of the left ventricle shadow <coughs> and the IVC shadow there is a space that typically occur whenever left ventricular enlargement is there <coughs> which is called as Hoffman regular sign which is a sign of right ventricular enlargement is what I want to underscore to all of you now you have been given a radiograph what is your diagnosis very simple there is a fracture which is involving the C2 so fracture of the C2 is basically called hangman's fracture fracture of the C2 second cervical vertebra there is a fracture you can see fracture which is involving the C2 C1 C2 is called as hangman's fracture hangman clay shoveler jefferson bennett in the thumb classical radiographs how do they look like you need to have uh, one look towards it which is nowadays the favorite question in dnb and um, uh, the other exams 